And uh, since you're all here and engaged in this sort of inquiry and listening to this sort of lecture, I assume that you're all on the process of waking up. Or else you're teasing yourselves with some kind of uh, flirtation with waking up. I am the father. I'm Batman. I'm Spartacus! Bond. James Bond. Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Goonies never say die. You're killing me, Smalls. I see dead people. That the power of Christ compels you. It's alive, it's alive. It's alive. Life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to an all-new interview for the Cinefellas podcast. That's right, Cinefellas, the only place where we will instantly become friends because both of our mothers are named Martha. I'm Niall Fortner of the Cinefellas, and today we have a Quiet Place screenwriters, Scott Beck and Brian Woods. The two screenwriters have joined forces with Hostel and Cabin Fever director Eli Roth to bring us a new fright feel of a flick called Haunt. Haunt finds a group of friends on Halloween night and they encounter an extreme haunted house, a haunted house that will feed on their darkest fears as the night turns deadly. Think of the movie The House's October Bill mixed with the insanity only a producer like Eli Roth can bring to the horror table. Scott Beck and Brian Woods are the writers and directors of Haunt. And in this interview, they discuss their writing partnership going way back since they were children, updates on A Quiet Place 2, and a whole lot more. So if that sounds interesting to you, then let's hop into this. actually glad I got to uh, see this movie because I love Halloween movies like this. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. And from what I've read, you, awesome. two, you two have been like creating like a writing duo since you were kids. Is that correct? Yeah, so Brian and I have uh, known each other since we were 11 years old and we've pretty much been working with each other since we were 11 years old. Um, like we, we got to start making short films in middle school and then in high school we were making these no budget feature films and just kept writing and, and directing throughout the years, you know, to this to this very day. And we just find that, that partnership to be um, you know, incredibly creatively fulfilling because we're able to challenge each other to hopefully do better than we would, you know, individually. Alrighty, awesome. And what was the first story you two created together? And when did it really become like a serious career path for you the both of you? I would actually watch The Sleepover. It sounds awesome. <laughs> so what inspired you to do your new film, Haunt, and what did you learn from A Quiet Place that really helped you prepare for Haunt? Right. So um, we, we actually wrote Haunt and Quiet Place uh, simultaneously. They were both movies that um, we were envisioning would be, you know, fairly, fairly small. They were something that we'd be able to go up and make if everyone, you know, in Hollywood didn't want to make them. And they were kind of both spectrums of the horror genre that we love. Whereas Quiet Place was very much like inspired by M. Night Shyamalan and The Sixth Sense and more of what people sometimes consider, and I'll put this in quotes, like elevated horror genre. Um, but while we were writing that, we kind of were like, ah, horror doesn't need to be elevated. Like, it's great how it is. And so we were also writing fonts simultaneously that was leaning into like our love of John Carpenter's Halloween and Toby Hooper's The Fun House and these really fun roller coaster slashers that um, that we love watching to this very day. Um, I think in, in 
in the wake of Quiet Place, though, something that we, you know, certainly are taking to heart with, with some of our other projects moving forward is trying to create something original and knowing that there's an appetite out there for things that don't necessarily have to be comic book movies or based on, you know, previous, you know, incarnations or remakes or sequels and just being able to take uh, bigger swings in the future and, and know that there might be an appetite out there that, that we can connect with. That's great, man. And did doing Haunt bring back any, like, wild Halloween or trick-or-treat adventures or even memories you two had while being on set? Yeah, I mean, I, I remember one time that um, in high school I was going haunted housing with a buddy of mine, and he had a few acquaintances from a neighboring high school that I had no idea who these people were. I didn't know if they were, they were good people or bad people. And they were like, we're going to take you guys out to this haunted house in the middle of nowhere. And we followed them for like maybe half an hour. And the whole way, my car was nearly running out of gas. I was already feeling anxious about where they were taking me because I didn't really know them. And we turned down this, this dark, dark road. And I, it was feeling like I was in a movie at that point. Like, okay, this is where I finally get murdered. I made a bad decision. Luckily, it didn't turn out that way. We showed up at this abandoned like farmhouse that had been set up as a haunted house, where you get on a hay rack ride. They take you to the cornfield, and it was just a really viscerally terrifying experience that has stuck with me to this very day. And we really fed that into haunt in terms of leaning into uh, how vulnerable uh, you put yourself into these situations when you give over all your safety to something that you think ostensibly is safe and typically is safe. But what about that one time that it's not? Oh, well, okay. And just out of curiosity, out of the two of you, who would be the scariest to encounter Halloween night in a haunted house and why? Brian, don't take this the wrong way, but I'm thinking it would be you, buddy. Am I right? <laughs> I, do, I am offended. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, uh, I think God is the most terrifying. <laughs> I, I think the reality is we are, um, we are just... Uh, you know, shy, humble uh, Midwest boys. So uh, we're we're not we're not very edgy or scared. We try to give the people helping out anybody that is uh, having issues in the haunted house. We quite kindly show them to the exit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, with a quiet place, you two played with the power of sound and how it creates tension and this this theme of communication. But what other elements or themes would you like to play with in the horror genre, or even out of the horror genre, for that matter? That's a great question. Um, I mean, I think things that we, we keep coming back to certainly tie into the idea of family and broken down communications and trying to relate that to real life experiences. Um, it's cer certainly something that we're, we're looking into as we, um, we embark on one of our, our future projects, which is the adaptation of Stephen King's The Boogeyman. And we're doing that for 20th Century Fox. And even though it's, it's very much um, a scary movie because it is about the boogeyman, we're also trying to lean into the idea of broken families and how they're able to um, make amends and move forward when it seems like they're at a standstill and nothing is changing. Outside of that, I mean, I think certainly um, the, the ideas of, of death and, and being able to grapple with losing people in life is something that we're looking at thematically for other future movies. Just because it's, it's an entirely human experience and it's very relatable, and that's what we love about the horror genre and also the sci-fi genre is that you can deal with really weighty issues in something that on the layer can just be entertaining, but for the fans and audiences that want to dig deeper, there's going to be a lot of substance there. Awesome. That sounds great. And when you two like write scripts together or when you collaborate, do you guys have like separate tasks and uh, what happens if you have like a difference of opinion on where the story should go? It's really fun, actually. It's really great when when we have two different opinions because it's an opportunity to challenge each other and find a better solution. Um, so often, when one of us is really passionate about an idea and the other person just doesn't get it, um, the other person expressing their concerns um, contributes um, new ideas to the idea that the person originally liked, and it just keeps evolving. It just gets better and better and better. We always feel like our collaboration is one of a uh, competition of ideas and being able to push each other when we don't agree or we're not excited enough is uh, it's actually uh, it's kind of what we think makes our, our work good. All right, nice. 
And just out of curiosity, did the two of you go to film school? And do you believe it's really necessary in today's age? I mean, I think film school is important for whoever, for multiple people. Um, we personally didn't do traditional film school in part because we got started so young that we were making these no budget feature films in high school, and we treated that as our film school, where we would do local casting calls, we would put the films up at the local IMAX theater, we'd hand out uh, test screening scorecards, so we could learn what worked and what didn't. Um, so when we got to college, uh, our, our exposure to film was more taking like film studies classes where it exposed us to world cinema, you know, movies coming out of Hong Kong or movies coming out of France in the 1940s and 50s, and just getting a wealth of experience being able to watch movies. But we have plenty of friends that went to film school, and one of the greatest things that you can get from, from that outside of just the studies is you create a network, and that network is important to have a support system of collaborators that you can work with or you can trust for, for feedback on projects you support. No, I agree. Forming a network is very important. And what are the qualities like every yeah. good director needs in order to have a successful set in a production, in your opinion? Um, I think, like, a respect for the job that everybody's doing on set because it's such a, it's such a challenge making a movie and, and the hours are really crazy, the conditions are um, difficult. And so I think if you can appreciate everyone from the PA to the assistant director to the cinematographer to the production designer and the art, PA, art, art director, like, whoever, everyone has such a crucial role. And your job is really to get the best out of everybody that you're working with. And so I think, um, you know, throughout our career, we've tried to, um, you know, do a lot of those positions ourselves as we've kind of worked up the ladder, um, which has given us a deep respect for the hard work that everybody does. All right. Yeah, that's great. I completely agree. And what are some things, like, everyday people may not know that happens on a horror movie set that doesn't happen, like, on other sets of movies, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I would say one of the fun things is, uh, first and foremost, it's actually never scary when we're on set. <laughs> like, uh, shooting a horror movie is um, maybe the least scary set possible, just because you're dealing with it once the cameras roll, but when the cameras are rolling, you need to release that tension, and you need to have a good time. Um, the other fun aspect is, in movies like this, there's always a great special effects team that is lending a lot of blood and gore and guts on set. And as horrific as it may appear on screen, again, it's just kind of fun to, to dream up these, these horrific things and lean into their expertise to, to bring it to, to life. All right. And, and Sorry to interrupt, but we just have about two minutes remaining. All right, that's perfect. Thank you. And speaking of uh, blood and gore, what is it like working with Eli Roth on Haunt, and how did you get him involved? Eli has always been wanting to make a haunted house movie. For years and years and years, he's been looking, he's been trying to find a script that he really responded to or that he really liked. I think he even tried to develop a few projects on his own. And, and our producer, on Haunt, Todd Gardner, flipped Eli the script and said, hey, this is, we're working on this, we're going to make it, what do you think? And Eli really, really responded to the material and, and just got so excited. And it was one of the most surreal days of our life when we got the phone call that Eli was interested in, in sitting down with us and talking about the project. And so we visited Eli while he was in the edit room on his movie Death Wish with Bruce Willis. And we got to sit down with him and he was the nicest person ever. And he had really smart, um, great notes on the script on how to make it even better and even more like lean into the characters and make them more interesting. And honestly, uh, he was, it was just a, pleasant um, collaboration. He was great to work with. He had a, a ton of great ideas, but he was also always the first person to read a new draft of the script or respond to an email or pick up the phone when we needed help. He was very, um, he was always there for us. So it, was, uh, it was really, really fun. All right, nice. And I recently heard that A Quiet Place 2 is set in the works for a 2020 release. Can you tell us anything about that and what fans can expect the second time around? Well, unfortunately, we, um, true to the uh, nature of a quiet place, we have to stay quiet on that subject. But um, they're filming right now, and um, we're uh, 
we're really grateful that audiences have embraced the project and, and that they're hungry for another movie. We never never saw it as a franchise or, or um, a, a series of films. We always felt like the, the first movie was kind of complete and contained in and of itself. Um, but at the same time, we are grateful that it necessarily for more. So. And I'm looking forward to everything. So thank you very much for your time and congratulations on being part of another great horror movie project. Great. Thank you much for saying that. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it was really great speaking with you. And would you like to let our listeners know where they can uh, find you on social media and when and where they can see Haunt? Yeah, so we're on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at uh, Beck and Woods. And um, the movie will be coming out September 13th. Uh, it's got a limited theatrical run, but that same day it's also available on all digital platforms. And then uh, in October, it'll be available on uh, Home Entertainment on DVD, but it'll also be available on uh, Shudder, the the horror platform. So that's where they can find it. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Likewise. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. Thank you all so much for listening to the Cinefellas Podcast. Hit that subscribe and follow button because we don't want you to go away and you don't want to go anywhere, check out our notifications and post over at cinefellas.com where you'll find movie reviews, videos, and more. And make sure you follow us on social media platforms at The Cinefellas on YouTube, Cinefellas on Facebook, and Cinefellas on Instagram and Twitter. Will you be checking out Haunt? And what are some of your favorite haunted house and Halloween horror movies? Feel free to let us know what you're thinking And have a good rest of the day and a good night, everybody. Why so serious? I am serious. And don't call me sure. Well, nobody's perfect. Go ahead. Make my day. E.T. Phone home. There's no place like home. Hasta la vista, baby.